Welcome to What is Truth? Brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth? is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Stahl. Welcome to the program. What is the last great day of the Feast of Tabernacles? Have you ever heard it explained in maybe your church that you go to, or maybe a minister would get up and make an explanation about the Feast of Tabernacles, that it lasted for seven days? And there was a day that followed the Feast of Tabernacles. It's called the last great day. Jesus Christ, at the risk of his life, kept the Feast of Tabernacles and he spoke on the last great day. Now, we're going to look at several questions. The first question is, is this a Jewish feast? Should Christians observe the Feast of Tabernacles? Did Jesus Christ and his apostles keep this day? Are we going to keep it in the future, in a future time when Jesus returns? So my purpose today is to explain this last great day of the Feast of tabernacles. Now, before we get started, we're offering two important booklets. The first is, Why Do You Observe Sunday? Now, the Bible teaches the observance of the Sabbath. It doesn't teach the observance of Sunday. A question here is, which day did Christ and the apostles observed. Which day did Paul teach Gentile converts to observe? How did the day become changed from the seventh to the first day of the week? 1 Thessalonians 5.21 commands us to prove all things. I ask you to please read this booklet with an open mind. If you're already right, honest investigation will but confirm it. If you're wrong, you should want to know it. Now, the second booklet, Why Were You Born? At the bottom of the booklet, it says, Do you really know why you were born? The purpose of your birth? Do you realize God has a purpose being worked out? And I might add for you, most fail to understand that purpose. Read this booklet you will be surprised. I've had people tell me that that booklet, Why Were You Born, is one of the most fantastic booklets. Read the booklets along with your Bible. Make sure they're biblically correct. Now we're going to Leviticus chapter 23, where we find all of the feasts of the Lord. These are not the feasts of the Jews. These are the feasts of the Lord. Now let's read it in Leviticus 23 and at verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feasts of the Lord. Did you see that? These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations Even these are my feasts. They belong to God. They don't belong to any special group of people. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day, notice it has the direct article, the, the seventh day, not a seventh day, the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Now, We're going to stop here for a moment. People ask me, well, we can worship any day, can't we? Well, certainly you can worship any day. You should worship every day. But there is only one day 
of rest that you're supposed to stop working and rest. So the command is work six days, rest the seventh day. Let's continue reading it. It's the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their seasons. Now we're going we're gonna to go down to verse 34. Verse 34, and it says here, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. That was last Monday, the seventeenth. You shall do no servile work therein. And it says, On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. So there is one extra day that's tacked on to the seven days of the Feast of Tabernacles, and that is called the last great day. Now let's go to John chapter 7. We're going to the book of John, and we're looking at chapter 7. And Jesus Christ here, at the very risk of his life, we read in verse 1, After these things Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, means over toward Jerusalem because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles was at hand. Now they were waiting for him. They were hoping he would come along with his family so they could identify him. And uh, it says here, in the last day, that's the eighth day, that great day of the feast, the last great day, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He who believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, or innermost being, shall flow rivers of living water. Now we wouldn't know what he was talking about if we didn't have this very next verse. <clears throat> But this spoke he of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which they who believe on him should receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Okay, we're stopping there. Now, I want you to understand this. God's Holy Spirit is invisible. It's like air. It's like electricity. You plug up an appliance in, you don't see the electricity going up the cord, up to the light bulb. You don't see that. It's invisible. But it's the power of God. It's God's power, the Holy Spirit. It's the most unique power in the entire universe. Now, we're going to go to Romans chapter 8 and learn a little bit more about God's Holy Spirit because it, it connects with this last great day. Romans chapter 8 verse 7. Let's read it. Because the carnal mind is enmity, that means it's hostile, against God. For it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be. So there's two minds. One's the carnal mind, and the other is the spiritual mind. So then, they who are in the flesh, they're carnal, cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, 
But in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God, that's God's Holy Spirit, dwell in you. So God's Holy Spirit must dwell within us. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You can call yourself a Christian, but you're not. You're a professing Christian. If you don't have God's Holy Spirit, you are not his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. You're not sinning any longer. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. So if God's Holy Spirit is dwelling in us, he who raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, means make alive, your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwells in you. Verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. We become sons and daughters of Almighty God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of of adoption. We're adopted by God. So God adopts us into his family, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now this word Abba is a Aramaic word, and it, it, the Greeks didn't have a word for it. So Paul used an Aramaic word, which means the familiar form of the word father, which means daddy. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We are the children of God. We belong to God Almighty. We're going now to Revelation chapter 20. Now, we left off here last week explaining the Feast of Tabernacles. Verse 1 says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. Now I told you I would explain you why he's being loosed, but let's just read on for now. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark. Remember the 666 upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Where at? Here on this earth or up in heaven? Revelation 5.10 says, and has made us kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. We're going to reign right here on the earth with Jesus Christ for 1,000 years while Satan is bound. Now we're working our way into this last great day. Please don't go away. We're taking a short intermission. We'll be right back.
Cheryl Burke, and I have a confession to make. I have a serious crush on my workout. Hip, fun, and always a challenge. Jazzercise is the total package. It's the only workout that I've ever truly loved. Does it show? That's because I'm in the best shape of my life. What a difference Jazzercise makes. When's the last time your workout swept you off your feet? Find a class near you at jazzercise.com. If you're looking for a new pet that you can cherish every day, consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are full of healthy, loyal, fun, loving pets, eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. So bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, you can visit the shelterpetproject.org. Hey, don't touch that dial, because you're watching the only independent TV station here in Las Cruces, the Las Cruces Channel. Keep watching. Welcome back to the program. In case you've turned in, tuned in late, we're talking about the last great day of the Feast of Tabernacles. What is the last great day? We're explaining it now. We're going to Revelation chapter 20, and we're looking at verse 5. Now, it says here, But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished, period. Now let's stop here for a minute. Who are the rest of the dead? Who are the rest of the dead? It is very simple. The rest of the dead are the rest of the dead. People who have died since Adam and Eve, people who never had a chance at salvation. Most of these people lived before Christ came on the earth. They did not know Jesus Christ. They lived and died a normal lifespan, and they're dead now. They never had a chance of salvation. They need to have their first chance, not a second chance, their first chance of salvation. There's people even living today. Like, let's take, for instance, 1,250,000,000 Muslims don't know Jesus Christ. They worship Allah. They worship a different God. There are others who are worshiping different gods. There are people who are worshiping no God at all, atheists. They're mainly agnostics. They don't know if there is a God or not. And they never had a chance at salvation. And they're going to have their first chance at salvation. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story. It's a true story. We had a family tragedy when I was very young. We had two cousins, Mary and Alan. They were very young. They were young children maybe five and seven years old. And my aunt uh, Irene and my uncle Sam were their parents. And they lived in Philadelphia above a luncheonette, on the second floor of a luncheonette. Well, a fire broke out from the luncheonette and caught these four people in the fire. Sam and Irene managed to get out my Uncle Sam, his hands were burned trying to save their two little boys. Their two little boys were dead. It was a family tragedy. These two little boys didn't know Jesus Christ. My aunt and uncle didn't know Jesus Christ. What's going to happen after the thousand years, after the millennium 
is over, the rest of the dead come back to life. Little Mary and little Alan, five and seven years old, at their death, are going to be looking for who? Mommy and Daddy. So they're going, these four are going to have their first chance at salvation. Now, last week we showed Isaiah 65 that everyone will have a 100-year period to prove themselves, to prove themselves whether or not they will obey God. So, little Murray and Alan and Uncle Sam and Aunt Irene are going to have their first chance at salvation. They will have a second chance at life, but they will be tempted by Satan. Let's read it, Revelation chapter 20, verse 7. Revelation 20, verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. What is the reason? He shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. We're going to stop there for a moment. Gog and Magog represent Russia, China, uh, Oriental peoples, peoples who um, don't know God. They don't know God, and he's going out and deceived them. They didn't overcome his deception the first time, in the first life. They must overcome Satan the second time around. The second chance at life, but only a first chance at salvation. Let's get that straight. We're not talking about a second chance at salvation. Only first chance. Okay. Now, let's go back to the Bible, see what happens. There are two groups of people on this earth. There are people who will obey God and be saved, and there's people who will not obey God and won't be saved. So what happens to this Gog and Magog? To gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Remember, this is after the millennium. This is after the thousand-year period. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. This is the city of Jerusalem. Jesus Christ is ruling from Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So they're all devoured. Anyone who comes up to fight Jesus Christ is not going to win. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are. See this word are? It's in italics. It's not in the original. The beast and false prophet were human beings. They were burned up. There are no more to them. They're ashes. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Who's going to be tormented day and night forever and ever? The devil who deceived them was tormented. And here we see, and, uh, we see a, white, a great white throne. And him who sat on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. There was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great. How can you see dead people? Well, they're resurrected. They're small and great, and they're resurrected. Stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, and they were judged out of those things which were written 
in the book according to their works. So some people will have their names written in the book of life and some will not. Those who are not written, whose names are not written in the book of life will be tossed into the lake of fire to burn up. That'll be their end. Well, we have the last great day is this coming Monday, the, the 24th of October. You're welcome to join us at our meeting hall at 1701 East Missouri. Come join us at 12 noon. We'll be happy to ha have you bring your Bible, a notebook, and bring your questions. Now, we have these two important booklets. Why do you observe Sunday? And why were you born? You could have these two along with a DVD of this program that you could share with friends, relatives, neighbors. Why don't you come along? We're, we're there every Sabbath, every Saturday at 1701 East Missouri. And on a Saturday, we meet at 1 o'clock. Until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.